back everybody. Today we're going over the Elzetta Alpha flashlight. We're gonna do some shooting out here, uh, step out in the backyard, check it out compared to some other lights, talk about the pros and cons of it and what I think of it overall, but that's pretty much it. That's what's coming up today, guys. Here you see the output from the Ozetta Alpha. The corner of my house right here is about 15 meters away from where we're standing. You can see it lights it up just fine. Nice balanced throw, not too floody, not too throwy, somewhere in the middle due to the fact that there is no reflector on the Ozettas. For comparison, here's the Surefire E1D. Has a much more focused beam, probably gonna throw a little bit better, but a little bit balanced in terms of the uh, flooding effect. Here's the Surefire to give you a, a contrast of what you see here with the Alpha. Obviously it's pretty dark out here. We're gonna see how this Elzetta Alpha does. If we could light up a target down there, it's downrange at uh, 50 meters. Let's check it out. Many of you may remember that last year I reviewed the Elzetta Bravo flashlight. It is an excellent light. Um, I said a lot of really good things about it because I like it a lot. It's probably actually my favorite flashlight in my entire collection, so that's certainly high praise because I have drawers full of flashlights. Um, great light. This is a two-cell version of the light we're talking about today, which is the Alpha model. The Alpha, obviously, is much more lightweight. However, the body is still the same diameter, so you can use it with any sort of uh, one-inch flashlight mount if you plan on using it on a rifle or a shotgun. However, it does have a pocket clip that's available now. It doesn't come with it but it is available so those of you guys that want to uh, like put it in your pocket or clip it on your belt, the option is available. That clip incidentally works on all the different flashlights, the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and even some of the older models. Now this one here specifically comes in a ton of different configurations. I'm gonna put up a chart here that you can kind of follow, sort of a flow chart in terms of what you actually wanna choose when you're, when you're going through and looking at. Do you want the crenellated bezel? Do you want the standard lens, which is what we have here? Do you want the flood lens? Uh, which tail cap you want, etc. I have the um, on off high tail cap only. So the output on this light is gonna be 350 lumens consistently. Uh, that's rated for 51 minutes. Um, if you do go for a low output tail cap, you're gonna get seven lumens on low, and that's rated for 36 hours of runtime with one uh, CR123 battery. So um, definitely good output there. And the numbers with Elzetta, you gotta remember guys, are never fudged. If anything, they're understated and over-delivered. So they say they're gonna give you 350, and I've seen some reviews on the forums, particularly Cannon Power forums, where guys have a lot of very high high-priced equipment to measure this stuff and they're all reporting that they're actually getting a little bit more output than that. Um, so those are the lumens. Um, the beam intensity with the standard lens here is gonna be 1900 candela, and with the flood lens, you're gonna go down to 235 candela. So that's the output. Certainly not gonna win any brightness contests as you guys just saw outside. However, it's more than enough for 99% of situations that you'll encounter out there. But you know, if you do want more output, the Bravo and the Charlie are out there. Oh as options. The feature set that I just listed, again, isn't the most impressive out there. Admittedly, without question, it's not. But when you actually get an Elzetta flashlight in your hands, you'll notice some things. First off, the fit and the finish is second to none. There simply aren't flashlights on the planet that I've reviewed, and I review a lot of them, that have a better fit and finish than the Elzetta lights. Everything about them is very like top-notch. The grooves here, um, the anodizing is even throughout. Uh, when you actually turn it, Everything is smooth, it, there's no rough spots, everything just works as it's designed. The tail caps on these lights are, are awesome in my opinion. A um, couple things that you'll notice about the tail caps that are different than other ones. This one here um, is the click tail cap, so basically it's a momentary on if you want, or you can click it down for constant on. But again, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are, off, that are available. One thing you'll notice about these lights is the tail caps are totally silent, so there's no actual sound emitted when you press them. So, no sound compared to like the E1D, for instance, which is a very good light as well. But you'll notice that loud click sound. So if you're in sort of a tactical environment, if you will, the lack of sound there could be an advantage. And it's also a very positive click when you push it on. Um, really just everything about it is nice. Also the lenses they use, or they don't use lenses, like I mentioned earlier, it's an acrylic 
um, lens. They don't use reflectors, excuse me. <laughs> they use lenses. It's an acrylic lens, solid acrylic, so that you get a nice even beam pattern, no hot spots, and it also increases durability. I've broken uh, several lenses over the years, including quality lights. I'll roll in a picture. I think I have a picture of the uh, Streamlight TLR here that I busted um, just using it. So with the LZs, you never have to worry about that. About the worst that's ever going to happen to your acrylic lens, from what I've seen, is maybe a chip in it. But even then, it'll still work just fine and keep on going like those that do. It's not just the acrylic lens that makes these lights tough. These things have what are called fully potted electronics. And in the most simple layman's terms, the way you can think of that is if they put the electronics inside the light here and then coated them in sort of like a polymer housing and like pour polymer in to make sure that those electronics cannot move cannot come disconnected, all that stuff. So that's essentially what fully potted electronics means. Um, not a lot of light manufacturers out there do that. So that makes them extremely shock resistant. You guys have seen several videos, I'm sure, of folks hammering with these lights. I believe Twang and Bang, uh, my friend, made a video where he and his daughter were hammering nails with these lights. I've seen a video where a guy takes the bezel of uh, one of these lights and punches it through a coconut and then turns the light on. It works just fine. Um, Obviously, the lights are uh, water resistant, waterproof. Um, that's no big deal there. A lot of lights out there will do that. But this one here, I froze for two weeks. And you can see the footage here that I'm rolling in. It still worked just fine, um, even in the frozen block, which is also a testament to the batteries, I suppose. But it worked just fine, functioned fine. And um, I mean, this is the result. It's still here after I've thought it out and made this video. So these lights are impressive, guys. I don't know how else to say it. The uh, alphas are also coming to market at a, a lower cost point than the other ones. So these alphas, I believe the MSRP, again, it's going to vary, as you saw earlier with the chart, on the base model is $130. So $130, that's MSRP um, for one of the highest quality flashlights out there. Really, in my opinion, it's a good value, and they're probably selling a lot of these. These have been out for a while now in several different retail locations, and uh, that's about it, guys. Not a whole lot to say. There are higher output lights out there, for sure. But again, with as with the Bravo, I don't know that there's any better light out there. If you guys have any questions about this light, anything else to talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.